give you glory for all you brought me through. And now I'm ready for whatever you want to do. I'm moving forward to follow after you. And now I'm ready for whatever you want to do. Your presence is an open door. So come now, Lord, like never before. Your presence is an open door. So come now, Lord, like never before. I know breakthrough is coming by faith. I see a miracle. My God, make me a promise and you won't stop now. Hey, hey. I know breakthrough is coming. and my name is Jaquila and welcome to Teach Youth if you're new here and if you're not new here then welcome back we're gonna go through some announcements so make sure you sit tight so you know how to get content first of all is that we have a Teach Youth podcast called Unmuted and they just released a new app episode called Academic Validation it is very insightful so make sure you check out that episode and make sure to check out the other episodes together they're all very cool second announcement is that we have online devotionals happening throughout the week online devotionals are a way that we can study about the bible talk about our daily lives learn more about god so make sure you contact your leaders for more info or if you're not in a tribe yet then make sure to contact in our instagram at the collective.u Next announcement is that we every last Friday of the month month is that we have these collective devos where we combine all of our tribes together at 8 p.m. on Zoom. Last announcement is that we have these TC services services happening every week Saturday 3 p.m. online and 4 p.m. offline. And then stay tuned for our Instagram at the collective youth for more info. And that's it for the announcement. Let's get back to the sermon. Hi guys, welcome to TC Youth. My name is Brista. I'm one of the leaders here. I'm so excited to start a new sermon series called Prism. So for the next five weeks, we will be talking about things that God wants us to remember that he doesn't want us to actually forget. Maybe we have heard some of them and he wants to remind us again or some of these things will be something new to you. So I really hope that God can remind you of how good he is and things that he cares about you. Okay, so this week my sermon title will be Closer Than You Think. Before I start, I want to share a little fact about me Maybe you know, maybe you don't know. If you go to uh, high school with me, then you might know. But I used to be in the dance team. I was in a cool, the popular kids. But anyway, um, I loved doing it. And it was really serious. I think there was one time we attended a competition. If you don't know, we attended DBL. It's... um, it's like this basketball league, but inside of it, every halftime, on the halftime, they would have the dance competition. So that's where we 
attend the competition. And I think there was one time we actually went to semifinals, but then I don't know why we didn't go to finals, which is sad, but it's okay, you know? So by telling you guys a little bit about me, it kind of shows that even that you guys don't really know about me. And it shows that it's really difficult to really know about a person fully. And the truth is there are times that we would, we ourselves would feel that way, that we feel like nobody really knows us. Just like the sermon, the, the sermon series this month, it, it's called Prism, where you would see like it's just a normal piece of glass, but if you shine a light on it and you, in a different angle, it will show different arrays of light and it will be so beautiful. What that means is that we're just like a prism where we might not, there are things that people might see, people might not see, and it really depends, right? I personally have felt this way where I feel like nobody really knows me and I feel like I'm alone and I feel lonely. And the, th- the two things that I, that will always be in my mind is what, especially when I was in high school is that I feel like I don't fit into the friend group, to the people around me. And I just feel like people can't seem to relate with me, which is something really sad. And sometimes even I feel like that also happened because there are types of barriers that either I've built or other people have built to kind of prevent me to, to know another person or for other people to know me. And actually, the two things that kind of helped me go through that, that, that feeling of loneliness or feeling like I can't seem to relate with people, um, the first thing is I always, I feel like the, the something that helped me was knowing that I'm not alone in feeling this way. There are other people that feels the same way as me. And I bet if you go to tribes later on, and we talk about this in tribes, that I bet your leaders have gone through the same thing too throughout their whole life, or maybe they're feeling it right now. We never know, right? That's the first thing. The second thing that helped me a lot was knowing that this is something that I cannot feel, something that I was that we aren't supposed to feel, that we are created to be human beings that build relationship that is uh, that's just supposed to socialize with other people. And that's why um, we aren't supposed to feel uh, lonely, right? I mentioned before um, about barriers between us, that there are barriers between us and other people. But actually, sometimes this actually happens um, with our relationship with God. There are times where we feel like there is a barrier between God where we feel like he is just far away. He's really distant. Um, We can't hear him. And I personally have gone through that. I have felt like even right now, I'm feeling it. Right now, I'm going through the season where I feel like God is really silent. I, f- I'm, I feel like he's far away from me, which is something really hard for me to grasp because we as Christian, we have been taught that God is so close. He cares about us. But there are times where it might feel like it's the opposite, right? Where he feels just really cold and he's really distant. Okay, so... The separation that I'm talking about, it's actually something that was written in the Bible. And it was actually a part of a culture that God lived in. So just a little backstory. Um, God grew up um, in the first century Jewish culture or community. What this means is basically he's surrounded by really, really religious people. And within that culture, there is actually a lot of separation. I'll give you an example and give you a little image of what that means. So in Jewish culture, they would build temples. And inside those temples, there are different areas for different people. And in order to um, know the different areas, they are separated by curtains. So for example, if you weren't Jewish, you had to stay on the outside area of the temple. That's first. The second 
if you're a woman, um, even if you were Jewish, you could only go in so far. And if you're a Jewish man, you can go inside, but there are certain places that are off limits if they weren't a part of the religious order. What that means is basically if you are not a part of the staff. And lastly, if you're a priest, you could go to most places, but only on certain days. So as you can see, this separation wasn't just a feeling for the Israelites. It's actually was a reality for them, right? Because there's even they're separated from even worshiping their God, worshiping God. So we will look more into why I mentioned about the separation culture by reading our verse for um, our scripture for today. We will be reading from Matthew 27, verse 33 to 37, and then we will continue to verse 50 to 51. So let's open up our Bible and let's read from Matthew 27, verse 33 to 37. So they came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. There they offered Jesus wine to drink mixed with gal, but after tasting it, he refused to drink it. When they had crucified him, they divided, up, they, they divided up his clothes by casting lots. And sitting down, they kept watch over him there. Above his head, they placed the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of Jews. As the story continues, um, and as he died in the cross, something actually happened in verse 50 and 51. So we continue to verse 50 and 51. And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Remember the curtain that I mentioned before? This is literally what God tore. And what it means is that God have torn the separation between his people and him. And, or in other words, the, other, the, the days of separation is over forever. I personally have heard this story and have read this story so many times, especially as we're coming near into Easter. Um, this is a story that will be talked about, right? And back then, I never really understood what it meant when God tore um, the currents in the temple. And knowing that that's what it meant and knowing the background, why God did that, it was more meaningful and it was more symbolic for me because what Je Jesus wishes we knew and to never forget is that there isn't any separation and that we can be close to God. And that's something amazing for me to realize. And I really hope that you guys, re um, when you hear about this, you feel really happy to know that there is no separation between God and me, that I can be close with him, right? And even if there are times that we can't be close to our friends and our family, just know that like that, God, because God has, has put away that separation and we are able to be close to him. And some of you might feel like in order for us to feel like God can be close to us or we can be close to him is by be, being well behaved, doing all these different steps. That is actually not true because I want to remind you that no matter your past or even your present, what you're doing right now, it will never define who you are and God's decision to be close to you. This is a statement that I personally will always put in my heart and bring me everywhere and bring it with me everywhere I go whenever I feel alone. I, I remember back then that this is something that God actually said to me that no matter what you do, no matter the past mistakes and sins that you have made, I still love you and I'm still close to you and I will be close to you. And I really do hope that you guys also remember this and be a reminder for you guys in your guys' life. So 
As I close up this week's sermon, I want to ask this question to you guys. What does the idea of Jesus closing the gap of separation means for us? For some of us, um, this may be something new. And I want to encourage you guys to be confident in knowing that because of what he did, we can be close to God. And also, as followers of, of Christ, remember that Jesus' Jesus's work was good enough to bring down the curtains for everyone. Let me emphasize that. Everyone. And not only certain people. Which is why we have a great opportunity as followers of Christ to help other people to realize to realize this good news and encourage them to know that they have the opportunity to be close with him despite their loneliness, despite the feeling of unworthiness, the feeling of unloved. And yeah, and it's just something super that I, I am so grateful to hear this. And I'm so grateful that you guys can hear this. And I hope that God will re- remind you again. So before we close, I want to pray for all of us. So let's pray. God, we thank you so much for today. We thank you that you have reminded us that there is no separation between us and you, Lord, that we can be close to you. So I pray that we can always remember that and we put that into our hearts, Lord, and bring it everywhere that we go, Lord. Lord, as we go into our tribes, I pray that all of our discussions will be a blessing that we will learn more about you, learn more about our friends, about our leaders, and just have a really great discussion, Lord. So I, so we give our tribe, uh, tribes into your hands, Lord. And I also pray for the next week. I pray that all of us can go through our week full, um, feeling grateful and just feeling blessed with our day, Lord. So we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. So guys, that's it for today's sermon. Right after this, we have tribes. So hop back into the Zoom. And so excited to see you guys. Have fun.